Hey guys, what is going on? Wizzy Wizard here in a brand new video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys all of my Falcon client settings, as well as how to install Falcon if you freshly buy the client and how to set it all up. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Now, before this video starts, I would just like to remind you that you can buy my Falcon cape over on the Falcon website, the same website where you buy the actual client, that's falcon.net. Just hit store, hit capes, enter your IGN and head over to the media section. And there you will see myself, Heroic, and Dexter's capes. If you want to support any of us, go ahead and buy our capes. It really helps us out a bunch. Now, if you already have Falcon Client and you know what all of the mods in the client do, and you just want to quickly download my profile so that you can have the exact same profile as me, I'm going to put the profile code as one of the first things in the description down below. So you don't have to watch this entire video. All you have to do is hit right shift, go to profiles, download profile, and enter my code here, and then hit the plus button, and then you'll be all good to go. So once you've bought Falcon Client from falcon.net and made a ticket, you will receive the client role as you can see here. Once you receive the client role, you will obviously get access to the client categories and this is where you can go ahead and download Falcon Client. Currently we're up to version three and that is the most up-to-date download. So you wanna to head to the Falcon download channel and you can here download v for either Mac or Windows. We are on a Windows machine, so for this tutorial, we're gonna be downloading it for Windows. So let's just go ahead and click this download here. It will bring up a blank website and start the download for the zip file. Once you've got the zip file, you basically just wanna drag this to your desktop and extract files. Once you've extracted the files, you receive this folder here. If you've ever extracted files before, you already know how this works, but you just open this up. It's basically the same thing. And you just wanna run this launcher. And as you can see, as you run the launcher, it will create the Falcon client icon then on your desktop and it will automatically launch Falcon. Now, if you're having troubles getting to this stage, I just want to remind you of a quick tip that may solve your problem. When you buy Falcon client, it is locked to an email address and that email address is by default, Falcon assumes that the Minecraft email you use is the same as your PayPal email. Now, if your Minecraft account email is different to your Falcon client email, what you're going to want to go and do is hit Windows key and R, go to percent app data percent, go to your dot Falcon, Falcon folder, and the email in this, you want to change this from your Minecraft accounts email to your PayPal email. So let me just make that very clear. The email of this folder should be the purchase email you used for Falcon, not your Minecraft account. Once you've done that, just try relaunching Falcon and it should work absolutely fine. From this point, you just hit launch. It's going to start the download and then you should be in Falcon from there. Now that you're on Falcon Client, you're probably wondering how to set up all these mods because if you hit right shift to open up your GUI and you take a scroll down, there is a lot and a lot of different mods. So what I'm going to be doing today is I've gone ahead and disabled every single mod and made a brand new profile and I'm going to be going through all of these mods and enabling which ones I would use, explaining every single mod individually, and then explaining why I don't use certain mods. Now starting us off, we do have the armor status mod. Now we are gonna enable this. If you don't know what this is, you're extremely new gen, but this just shows you your armor durability. Now I have mine on horizontal, just as I put it up here laying downwards so that it can be covered by my stream overlay when I'm streaming to prevent stream sniping. I'm gonna turn custom font off because I personally don't like the look of it, and I don't need to see item equipped. I just wanna see my armor. Now for value display, you can change this to either show you a percentage of how much of your armor is left or the actual amount of hits, which is like an item durability, which would be like 384 or something like that is max. I like keeping mine on the actual value damage, so I'm just going to keep that how it is. And now that I've put some armor on, you can see on the left here, here is my armor status HUD. You can at any time when you want to move mods, just go to the top right here and hit edit HUD and you can move these around to wherever you want. So I'm going to sit mine about here. Moving down, we have block cords. Now, I don't use this mod and I honestly am not too sure if it's even that good, but I, again, personally don't use block cords. Moving down to block overlay, another personal preference mod. I do actually use this and I normally set the color to a nice green. So I am going to go ahead and set that now. And basically all this does is when you highlight a block, you'll see that it highlights it green. Uh, I don't know why people use this or why they don't. Again, it's just personal preference. I kind of like it. And uh, yeah, you totally don't have to use that. Boss bar, I don't use. Breadcrumbs, I don't use. Button spammer, I don't use. Cane helper, I do use. Now, it doesn't actually say anything for cane helper, but I believe what this does is it prevents you from breaking the bottom block of cane and also slightly helps with FPS. I may be wrong, but I believe that's what it does. So I always just leave this on as it's really not doing anything bad. Moving on to chat, I don't use chat, but if you do want to use the chat mod, it basically doesn't do anything except these settings here. You can make it compact, custom, and it shows timestamps, which kind of glitches out for me, and also infinite chat, which allows you to just infinitely scroll up in chat. So if someone's shit talking and you want to screenshot it like a few hours later, as long as you haven't disconnected, you can scroll all the way up. 
Again, I don't use chat mod, but that's what it does. Now for the chunk footers mod, I often toggle this one on and off depending on what I'm doing. If I'm doing base work or claiming cannons and stuff, I'll turn this on, but it's really easy to toggle. I just hit right shift and go over to render and it's at the top of the render settings. But as for chunk borders, you want to turn this one on. Chunk border mode, I always set this to vertical as then you can see it around. The other one's like on top and uh, shows them on the floor. A lot of people like dynamic, but again, I just keep mine vertical. I've set my color to white and I put the line width down to one, which I believe is one of the lowest possible widths. Moving on, we have clock. This is pretty much just a time and date. I don't use this, but if you, for some reason, only have one monitor or something and want to know what the time is while you're playing, that mod's always helpful. Colored redstone, pretty self-explanatory. Just changes the color of redstone, so it'd be pretty helpful for printing and stuff like that. I don't use mine because I don't often print cannons, and I also have this integrated in my current texture pack, so I don't really need the mod, but that's what the mod does. Combo just displays your current combo, bit of a PvP mod. Coordinates shows your current coordinates. I do turn this on and I do have this sitting up in the top left. So a few settings that I do for mine, I turn the background off, I turn the biome off, and I also turn the label off. I have show direction off and I have biome preset color also turned off. CPS mod, another pretty self-explanatory PvP mod, shows your current CPS counter. As you can see there, I don't have it set up anywhere. I also don't really use this mod because I don't necessarily care. As you can see there, it just shows your current CPS. Moving down, we have the crosshair mod. Now, I haven't really used the crosshair mod much at all but pretty much you can just draw your own crosshair and make it whatever you want you can be literally just as ridiculous as you want but i don't use this because you can't make it as thin as you can make the lunar crosshair so therefore i'm not a huge fan of it but that's the crosshair mod direction hard just a classic forge mod will currently show your direction that you're facing pretty simple i actually keep this off because i have it set up for my coordinates mod Dispenser checker, I'm pretty sure you can use this for checking backwards dispensers, but you can also use it to check for lava dispensers. Fancy compass, much the same as the other compass mod, just a fancier version. Again, I don't use this. I do use this on Luna, but I don't use it on here because I have it up in my coordinates. Now you've also got the friends mod. Now you can't actually disable or enable this, but clicking it will open up the friends menu. Now this is a pretty new feature to Falcon. It's used for uh, integrating groups and stuff like that, and we'll cover groups pretty late up into the video because groups are an amazing feature that's been added recently. But if you would like, feel free to hit this plus button and type in Wizzy Wizard. I'm accepting all Falcon friend requests, so that'd be pretty cool. Moving down, we have Entity HUD. Just shows entities in the area, so don't use that. Pretty, uh, pretty useless unless you're like testing specific things. Now we've got the FPS mod. Now I do use this. It just displays your current FPS. And at the moment, that's pretty low, but that's because I don't have no lag settings set up. But just a few features that I do for this is I turn off the background, and then I'm going to move it up in my HUD to around here. Moving down, we had Gamma. Now, this is just literally full bright. Always turn this on. There's like almost no reason not to have this on. Low HP tint. Now, I do also use this and I set it to four. What this does is when you get four hearts, it'll just flash your screen red just to let you know that you're low hearts, just in case you're forgetting. Uh, it's also a personal preference. A lot of people don't like this mod. I also really, really hated this mod when it first came out, but I started using other people's profiles who used it and it kind of just grew on me, so it's always handy to use. Keystrokes, another common PvP mod. I don't use this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. As you can see there, it just shows and highlights what keys you're using. Memory usage and map writer, both also pretty useless. Uh, memory usage just shows you your memory here. Mouse bind fix. Now, I'm not entirely sure, but this is a pretty common forge mod, but I'm pretty sure this helps with uh, mouse key binds. I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on it. Uh, I've always just left it on. I've left both of these on. I'm also not entirely sure what mouse delay fix does, but I've always just left them both on because I don't think they do any harm regardless, but you're honestly going to have to do your own research on these because I'm not entirely sure what they do. Old animations. Now this just shows 1.7 item animations. So I just have all of these enabled just because I'm like just so much more used to 1.7 animations. But basically if I just grab a sword real quick, it's just 1.7 block animations, block heating and stuff like that. So most people use these on pretty much all clients. So you want to go ahead and enable those ones. Now here you have the patch crumbs and this is where it can get a little bit confusing. Now you've got patch crumbs old, old, you've got patch crumbs old and then you've got patch crumbs new. Now personally, I don't know why they still keep the old ones in, but they're there just in case for whatever reason people want to use them or test them. But you're pretty much always going to want to enable the most recent patch crumbs and basically patch crumbs is literally, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just patch crumbs. And the reason you want to use the most recent update of patch crumbs is because it's more likely to be stopping overstackers and anti-breadcrumb cannons. So they're just the most up-to-date and the most frequently used. In terms of tracer and shot color, you can change this to whatever you want. Tracer will just basically be a line, a big line on your screen pointing you to the direction of the current shot. So if you don't like that, you can turn that off. And you can also turn off minimap display. I don't use minimap, so it doesn't matter. I just leave it on anyways. But as for tracers, if you don't want that big tracer on your screen, then you can go ahead and disable tracers up here. As for the Falcon settings, I'm yet to really test most of the brand new patch crumb settings. I was recently using patch crumbs old, 
but I'm pretty sure most of these settings are pretty good and pretty up to date, so uh, you can test these out for yourself, but if you're completely new to Falcon and don't know anything about the crumbs, I recommend just jotting down most of these settings, and they should work relatively fine. 360 Perspective, honestly my most favourite mod in the entire game. I always set this to R, but you can set this to whatever you want, and if I just leave F5 right now and I hold down R, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just 360 Perspective mod, it's literally one of my most favourite mods in the entire game. I also enable Require Hold because I don't like having to like, just press it, I like being able to hold it, and then when I release the key it will snap me back into my current view. Ping, another self-explanatory mod, it will just show your ping. I don't bother about this because I already know my ping is always above 200, so I don't really use it. Portal fix, actually clueless to what this is, so if someone could tell me, please let me know. Potion counter, I do use this mod, I put it above my hotbar, and as the rest of the mods, I also disable the background. Potion status, obviously I also want to use this, this just displays all my current potions. So if I go to edit HUD right now, I've already moved my potion counter down here. This will just tell me how many pots are left in my inventory. And then as you can see up here is the potion status. I normally leave this around about here and this will just list all my current potion effects. Now with the potion status effects, as you can see on the left here, it currently has preset potion color selected, which just means that speed is blue, fire res is orange, etc. It just follows the color theme of that potion, but you can go ahead and disable that so they all come up as white. But I kind of like having them color coded, so it's just easier for me to tell what I currently have. And I'm also going to go ahead and drop the scale of that to a about 0.75. Moving down we have reach display. This just shows you how many blocks you're currently hitting someone from. Saturation shows your saturation. Schematic count. Now this mod is an amazing mod and I feel like Falcon schematic is one of the best schematics you can possibly get. For the settings you basically just want to copy all of these down and this is possibly one of the best printer settings you can get. If you find that you're having problems with packet loss and you keep getting kicked from the server that you're currently on, maybe drop your place distance down to 5. I normally use mine at 8 but if you're having problems with it, keep it at 5. And as for the tick box settings, I'm not going to go ahead and read all these out, but if you're worried that yours are wrong, just go ahead and pause the video and follow most of these down. You can enable things like moving the schematic of arrow keys. I don't personally, but it is a pretty cool quality of life feature and some people might want that. So I suggest that you actually read through these and just see what you might want selected. Now moving on, we have SS Uploader. Now basically this just gives you the option to upload your screenshots to sites like Imgur, Gaiazo, etc. when taking screenshots. So if I quickly take a screenshot in chat, it'll take a bit longer and it'll say wait a few, but as you'll see in a moment here, it will come up with the option to upload that screenshot straight to Imgur. Now the scoreboard mod, I always use this and I always drop the scale up to about 0.7 and I always disable show numbers. Now this will just make the scoreboards on servers a bit smaller and the numbers that are on the side normally keeping them up it also disables those. So it just makes my screen look a bit neater and uh, there's less clutter going on. So if you want to follow those settings you can. Now moving on we have hand POV. Now I personally don't use this but as you can see when I enable it it's just going to change where my hand's POV is and I can... Go ahead and make that super far away, super close, etc. I don't know why anyone would honestly change these, but the option's there in case you do. But I, yeah, personally do not use this mod. Speed just shows you how fast you're traveling. Stopwatch, you can set a uh, keybind and use this to time things. Tick counter, this is for your cannons. Toggle sneak, now I do have this enabled. I do not use toggle sneak, but I do use toggle sprint. And I do use fly boost, and I normally have my fly boost vertical set to about 2, and my horizontal also set to 2. Sometimes I do come in here and disable fly boost if I'm doing things that are a bit fidgety and I'm not trying to be zooming across the place. Also, be careful when setting fly boost because some servers do have a rule on how fast you can use fly boost, and some servers just completely ban for it altogether. So just double check with your server rules before setting some crazy fast fly boost speed. Next up we have the TPS mod, now I do use this mod and I normally just keep it there so I disable the background and that's pretty much all I do to it and I normally just clip this under my FPS mod right there. Void clicker fix, now this is similar to mouse delay fix, I honestly have no idea what these do but I don't think they do any harm so I normally just enable this. World edit CUI, also not entirely sure what this is, I'm pretty sure it's used to help make cannons but I don't use this because I obviously don't make cannons. And then zoom, this is another feature that I don't actually have on, and that's purely just because it's an Optifine feature, and you can just change this in your regular Minecraft settings. So mine is set to C, but if you for some reason aren't running Optifine on Falcon, which I'm pretty sure it's impossible because it's built in, but uh, yeah, for whatever reason, you can just do this. So there is all the mods that I've basically just gone through. That's pretty much every mod on Falcon, but we do have a few extra settings we want to go ahead and change. So if we go over here to the FPS settings, you have a bunch of different settings here. You have all the FPS settings, Optifine settings 
and the regular settings. Now for regular settings, I do disable F5 name tags and I'm quite sure this will require a relog. Oh, maybe not. So as you can see, my name is no longer at my head. Sort tab to prioritize Falcon users. I also turn this off. Basically what this does is it just means every user that's on Falcon on your server will be at the top of the scoreboard when you hit tab. But I do keep showing logo on tab because I like to see who's on Falcon. It's just a pretty cool feature. And moving down, we have Optifine. Now these are just preset uh, FPS settings. So if you've got like a low FPS, you can click that, medium or best FPS, etc. That'll just automatically preset your Optifine settings as well as FPS settings. Now in terms of FPS settings, I don't think I have changed any of these four categories here. But as for the actual FPS settings, I have changed a few to change how the chat works. Clear water, I have disabled. Liquid vision, I have disabled and stuff like that because I don't like my water disappearing when I go under it because I like to see where air pockets actually are. But anyways, feel free to just copy all of these settings down. I don't think I've changed any of these four, but if you feel like yours are wrong, then you can go ahead and just copy them for whatever reason. Now moving on, we have one of the coolest features from Falcon that is relatively new, which is the group system, which is what I was talking about earlier with the friend system. Now once you've got people added as friends on Falcon, you can go ahead and create groups and invite those people. All you have to do is open up your friend settings, and when you click on someone's name here, you can get an option to invite them to the group. Queen French here is actually already in my group, so I don't have that option. But if he accepts the invite, you'll see that we have a group here called Wizards. You can manage this and promote people or whatever you want. And you basically just get all of these cool features. I can set a waypoint for the group, and then everyone that's in my group will see where that waypoint is. So if you have something like a trap or something like that, and you have forgetful faction members that won't set waypoints, but they're on Falcon, you can do that. You also have things like ping, which is a relatively new feature. So if I have mine set to J on my keyboard, but I press J, it's going to ping my location right here. And everyone that's in my group is going to see this massive ping. So if I'm screaming for help or something like that, I can just go ahead and hit my you know, ping button and everyone's going to see that and they can run over and help. You've also got options like highlight players in the groups. Now, basically what this does, I'm pretty sure, is other members that are in your group, it will change the color of their helmet to blue. And it just goes to show like who's in your group and stuff like that because they're extremely noticeable with the color of their helmet. You also get sign in and out notifications. I'm not sure if these work, but they plan on adding a lot more group features. But for now, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but it's going to be super, super helpful when they start adding some more of these features. Now, guys, that is pretty much going to wrap up this entire episode. I hope you did learn something today. And if you were wondering whether you should buy Falcon or not, I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about the client, some of the features it has, and also how to install the client. So if you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like down below, hit that sub button, we're getting very, very close to 1.5k, the support has been absolutely crazy, and I just want to remind you all that we are going to be releasing this Wizzy 2k pack when we hit 2,000 subs, it's available in all these different color variants, and it's a pretty sexy pack, we've been working pretty hard with the designer to make it perfect, but again guys, without further ado, we will see you all in the next episode.